Hello, and welcome to the Demoet series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Demoets are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this Demoet, we discuss pull-based incremental database caching. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining incremental caching and outlining its importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of incremental caching. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoet. Let's begin by discussing what incremental caching is and why it is important for our customers. TDV caching enables data from virtual views and procedures to be materialized to a wide range of relational database targets. When a view is cached, its data is physically stored on the cache target. When end users access the view, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than from the primary physical data sources. Cached views and procedures may be low-level replicas of physical data sources, or they may be higher-level abstractions of federated data from many physical sources. Developers and administrators may configure cache refresh requirements in a highly granular manner. By default, the full cache is refreshed. However, incremental caching is also possible. With incremental caching, the entire cache is loaded when the cache is first created. Subsequent cache refreshes deal only with rows that have been added, deleted, or updated since the last refresh. Incremental caching is important to our customers in many use cases. When cached datasets are very large, a full refresh operation can be time consuming. If the volume of adds, deletes, and changes is relatively small, incremental caching can offer performance advantages. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo that shows the use of incremental caching. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. We'll examine two use cases. The first use case is very simple. We cache a table that contains sales transactions. These transactions are considered immutable. They are never updated or deleted. Therefore, we only have to worry about incremental caching for newly inserted rows. The second use case is more complex. We cache a federated view that joins data from two different databases. These databases allow inserts, updates, and deletes, and our incremental caching implementation must do so as well. In order to use this demo, you must have a working knowledge of single table database caching. If you need a refresher, a demoet on this topic is available. This demo requires significant setup. You can easily build the resources from scratch. However, authorized users can access a car file and data files from the Demoet repository. We use three physical data sources, inventory, supplier, and transaction. Each of these sources is an Excel spreadsheet, making it very simple to perform inserts, updates, and deletes. Introspect these spreadsheets in TDV to create the data sources. We use tiny data sets, which makes it easier to see the results of our changes. The transaction spreadsheet begins with four rows. The key is transaction ID. The inventory spreadsheet also begins with four rows. Its key is a concatenation of product ID and supplier ID. The supplier table also begins with four rows. Its key is supplier ID, and the values must match the supplier ID column on the inventory spreadsheet. This demo uses five views. The level one physical views simply mirror the data sources. The level two business views join inventory and supplier on the supplier ID column and use all columns from both data sources. These two views are identical, except that one is cached and the other is not. You will also need a database cache target. I used SQL Server, but of course you may use any supported database. Configure single table caching for the inventory level one view and the inventory supplier level two view, but do not load either cache until we begin the demo. If you have run this demo previously, simply clear the caches. This demo also requires four SQL script procedures. 
We'll examine them in detail as we proceed through the demo. Prototype scripts can be found in the TDV user's guide. So if you are writing your own scripts, start with the examples found there. Now we are ready to begin our demo. Open the level one transaction view. Before beginning the demo, you configured single table caching, but you did not load the cache. Now change the cache from full refresh mode to incremental refresh mode. Click browse to enter the paths to the initialize and refresh scripts. Save your work and click refresh now. This will cause the initialize script to execute. Let's examine the initialize script. Remember, our first use case only cares about inserts to the data source. All incremental cache refresh procedures return a single output, which is the incremental maintenance level that will be stored in the cache status table. We have designed this use case so that we use the highest transaction ID as the incremental maintenance level. We begin with some housekeeping. Logging is a great way to track the progress of the scripts and we'll use it frequently in this demo. Entries are written to the CS server log and we'll be looking at the log with a freeware utility called Wintail. We'll need the currently active cache key. Since we want to use the highest transaction ID as the incremental maintenance level, we'll need to retrieve it from the source data. If the source data is empty, we'll set the incremental maintenance level to zero. Now we can load the data from the source into the cache, prepending the cache key we retrieved earlier. Note the query hint, disable data cache. This hint tells TDV not to read the source view from the cache. This hint is absolutely essential. Without it, we'll never see any new rows that are not yet cached. If you use the prototype scripts from the user's guide, be sure to check the spelling for these hints, since the user guide prototypes are not actual running examples. Set the new incremental maintenance level, log the completion of the script, and we are done. When we refresh, the cache status changes from not loaded to up, and the log shows that the script executed. Our level one view returns the correct data, and its execution plan shows that the data is being retrieved from the cache. The cache target table also shows the correct data, and the cache status table contains the highest transaction ID as the incremental maintenance level. Now we'll look at the refresh script. Since it is very similar to the initialization script, we'll concentrate on the differences. The WHERE clause in the insert statement uses only rows that are new since the last incremental maintenance level. We have also introduced exception handling. In the event of a failure, we make sure the incremental maintenance level is not changed. Now, add a new row to the transaction spreadsheet, which is our physical data source. Our view does not show the new row since it is not yet cached. Refresh the cache, and the refresh script now executes instead of the initialize script. The new row now appears in the view, and the cache status table shows the new incremental maintenance level. Our incremental refresh process is working correctly. Now we're ready to tackle the more ambitious use case. The inventory supplier view federates data from two physical data sources. In addition, its logical key is a concatenation of product ID and supplier ID. Most important of all, in this use case, we need to synchronize updates and deletes in addition to inserts. The implementation that we will show should not be considered exemplary. First of all, we will show several different techniques of interest because you may want to consider different approaches. When these different techniques are cobbled together, as in this demo, they may not add up to the most efficient solution. Second, we purposely choose some approaches that highlight various design considerations for incremental caching. By highlighting some of these design trade-offs, we hope to show multiple approaches to the problem. Finally, keep in mind that incremental refresh is not necessarily better than full refresh in every situation. You should consider both approaches and study performance based on the size of the data, 
the number of updates, adds, and deletes, and the complexity of capturing all change events on the data source. Just as before, we have set up single table caching but not loaded any data. Go to the Advanced panel on the Views Caching tab, change the Refresh mode from Full to Incremental, and browse to select the Initialize and Refresh scripts. Save your work, refresh the cache, and the Initialize script will execute. Let's examine this script. Again, we'll just look at the parts that differ from our previous scripts. This script is very simple. The insert statement bypasses the cache and loads all rows from the source into the cache target table. Here is an interesting design decision. In the previous example, which only concerned itself with inserts, we could use the highest transaction ID as the incremental maintenance level. Now though, we are dealing with deletes and updates, so the highest transaction ID does not necessarily correlate to the latest changes we need on the cache. Therefore, we have decided to initialize the incremental maintenance level to 1 and increment it with each refresh. You might choose to use a date and time or some other approach. When you refresh the cache, the initialize script runs and the cache status changes to up. As expected, the view now returns data from the cache and the cache status table shows an incremental maintenance level of 1. Now let's examine the refresh script. Again, we'll just look at the parts that differ from what we have seen in other scripts. As noted earlier, we have decided to deal with the incremental refresh level by simply incrementing it. Now let's deal with rows that are new since the last refresh. We are going to synchronize the contents of both source and target based on the data itself, and we will take this approach for deletes and updates as well. Other approaches are possible. For example, you might choose to read log files from the source database in order to find changes. This insert statement uses a subquery to find the appropriate rows from the source data. We bypass the cache and prepend the cache key. The subquery performs an outer join and then filters so that only rows that are not present on the cache remain. These rows are inserted. Deletes are interesting because our logical key is a concatenation of supplier ID and product ID. These are decimal fields in the view and on the cache. However, the SQL script perceives the source data as an integer when we bypass the cache, so we harmonize everything by casting, as shown here. The subquery gives us an in clause of logical keys to be deleted. By doing an outer join with the cache as the driver table, and keeping rows that do not match on the source. We'll take a different approach for updates by using a SQL merge statement. This presents an interesting problem because there isn't any place to specify the all-important query hint that tells TDV to bypass the cache for source data. We have chosen to solve this problem by creating a cloned view of inventory supplier that is not cached and using this view in the merge. Whenever the cache and source have a row that matches by key, we then check for differences in data content and update the rows where data content has changed. Now let's test our work. First, add a row to the supplier data source as shown here. Now add three rows to the inventory data source using the new supplier ID. Refresh the cache and the new rows appear. Now return to the inventory data source. Update one row, delete two rows, and add a new row. Refresh the cache, which now reflects all our changes. Using several different techniques, we have shown how incremental caching can be implemented for adds, changes, and deletes. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we've seen in this presentation. TDV caching enables data from virtual views and procedures to be materialized to a wide range of relational database targets. When a view is cached, its data is physically stored on the cache target. 
When end users access the view, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than from the primary physical data sources. Cached views and procedures may be low-level replicas of physical data sources, or they may be higher-level abstractions of federated data from many physical sources. Developers and administrators may configure cache refresh requirements in a highly granular manner. By default, the full cache is refreshed. However, incremental caching is also possible. With incremental caching, the entire cache is loaded when the cache is first created. Subsequent cache refreshes deal only with rows that have been added, deleted, or updated since the last refresh. Incremental caching is important to our customers in many use cases. When cached datasets are very large, a full refresh operation can be time-consuming. If the volume of adds, deletes, and changes is relatively small, incremental caching can offer performance advantages. Thank you.